Hear these words now from Luke's Gospel, the sixth chapter. Jesus is teaching. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Or even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God, thanks be to God indeed. And uh, another, another word of thanks, I, I really do want to thank Jeff and our AV staff for uh, helping us uh, get through this morning, get sound to you all, and thank you for moving forward. I, I have to tell you, for the responsive readings, uh, the choir agrees because they hear it too, for the responsive readings and the hymns, y'all sound amazing. You really do. That's what happens when we're closer together. All right, so we have a, a picture to show to you. I hope in the chaos of the morning we have a picture to show to you. Look, look at that group of folks. That is, um, that's some of you at, uh, from our retreat at Ferncliff last weekend. As you can see, there's a variety of ages and backgrounds. It's multi-generational, just like the church. What a blessing that was the next time it rolls around. Don't say that's not for me. That's for everybody, so consider joining us it was a blessing. And at one point uh, in the, the evening, Saturday evening, uh, we had three generations of, of churchgoers coloring on one large sheet of paper. We had, you know, multiple uh, three generations of churchgoers uh, playing games together and having all kinds of fun. So, and, and it's true of any time you go out into the wilderness and pray, I learned something really important about myself. I learned that I am all about Gaga Ball. <laughs> right, kids? It's good stuff. Good stuff. It was fun playing with the kids. It was fun uh, being way together. And thank you for those of you who came and worshipped here, uh, because we truly were the church in two different places, but it, it was a blessing for all of us. Now, uh, if, you, if you did go on the retreat, I'm sure you were fed spiritually, socially, emotionally, mentally, Certainly physically we were fed, and, and that's life in the church, right? We, we, we eat together a lot in fellowship, and we, and we enjoy one another's company, and we are fed in a variety of ways. And we've been talking about that, haven't we, the last three weeks, about the ways that we are fed in the church. Uh, one of the things that, that, that we read or we learned about at the retreat when, when we were talking was that uh, we shared a quote that said something like this, that God's love, or I'm sorry, the church makes God's love plausible. The church makes God's love plausible. And to a certain degree, when the church is being the church, the way the, the, the church at its best, right? When people are fed, when, when people are, 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 are fellowshipping and, and loving and caring and, and sharing concern for one another, um, it reveals 
something of, of, of God's love to the world. And to us, even. It makes it believable. It, makes it, it gives us a glimmer and a glimpse of, of hope of what God's love really is about. And so, um, I, I think that's true when we're fed in the church. Uh, but for us to be fed, right, in the church, somebody's got to be feeding. Okay? And so we've been talking about, you know, having something in the church, some ministry, some group, something you're involved in that feeds you spiritually, emotionally, and, and that in turn, then we are prepared as we're equipped to go and, and feed and serve others. And so that's what we're going to talk about today and next week. We're talking about being fed. Now we're going to talk about feeding. Right? And both are important as we follow Christ together. So when we talk about feeding, a couple understandings here. To be clear, when I'm talking about feeding, I'm assuming that is for others in the church. We might be serving other church members or visitors. Okay? But we also might be serving those who are outside the church. We also might be feeding those in our community or around the world. Our neighbors in Conway, our neighbors in Kenya, and anywhere in between, right? Also, when we're talking about feeding, of course, I mean that metaphorically. We're talking about serving people, but we're just using the language of feeding. So whatever ways that we're serving people, that might be feeding hungry folks, but it could be serving others in a variety of ways. Okay? So, when we think about Scripture, there is clearly no shortage, is there, in the Bible of passages that talk about serving or feeding other people. Uh, one of you, one of you shared a short list of Scriptures that was important to you, and, and I want to share this uh, short list with, with, with you all. Um, a, a passage from Isaiah. Learn to do right, see justice, encourage the oppressed, defend the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Proverbs. He who gives to the poor will never want, but he who shuts his eyes will have many curses. James. Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress. And the orphan and the widow, by the way, is at the heart of justice in the Old Testament. How we treat those who uh, in society in those times couldn't take care of themselves was the heart of justice in the Old Testament. And then, of course, I delivered to the poor who cried for help and the orphan who had no helper. That's also in Job. If you look throughout Scripture, or, or if you do a word search, okay, in the Bible, um, you'll find, uh, do a search for widow and the orphan and see what comes up. How many passages in Scripture deal with that? Or, or the stranger, how we're to treat the stranger. Or the foreigner, or the poor, or the hungry, or the naked. It's all over the place. All over in Scripture. And in particular, when we look at the Gospels, we see people being fed constantly. Uh, in fact, it was part of the understanding that when the Messiah would come, the hungry would be fed. It was a sign that meant the Messiah was here, that the kingdom of God had arrived, because the hungry were fed. That's really important. And so that's one of the reasons why our Luke 9 passage that Lindsay read a little bit ago is so important. It's actually the only miracle, and this is in the commentary section of your bulletins, it's the only miracle Jesus performed that's in all four of your Gospels. Okay? And so if we look at verse 13 of that passage, Luke 9, we, we know the story. We, many of us know the story all the way back to Sunday school days, right? We know the, the, the baskets of loaves and fish, and, and we know that there were lots of people there who were hungry, 5,000 men, probably also their families with them. You know, that was their way of counting back then. So I can't imagine the amount of people there present, right? And all these people listening to Jesus who's teaching them, feeding them spiritually, but they're hungry physically. And the disciples are like, you know, the kind thing to do right now, Jesus, would be to let them go home so they can get something to eat. 
And, and they're right, but Jesus has a better answer. You give them something to eat. Well, we know the story. We also can imagine our response, of course, right? What do you mean? <laughs> How's that going to work? But he shows them. He shows them. You know, he, he takes the loaves and the fishes, and the, they're sent out, and he tells the disciples, you know, to pass them around, and by the time it comes back, they have more at the end than they had to begin with, and everyone's satisfied. This is the abundance. We've been talking about abundance lately. This is the abundance out of which we are fed, especially in the kingdom of, of heaven, in the kingdom of God, especially when we recognize that our, that our Messiah is with us and has empowered us, that Christ is here. And so there is an abundance here, right? And it's out of our abundance, when, when, when we too are fed, that we know that we are equipped and ready to feed um, but we have to recognize, we have to appreciate in gratitude the abundance we already have. Remember, friends, we're, we're among the richest people to ever walk the earth when you consider all that we have. Okay? And so out of, out of that experience that you and I share, uh, there's so much that we have to give to others. Now, um, from that passage, then, we look at Jesus' teachings in Luke 6. And, and we can clearly see, right, how... Um, the feeding of the 5,000, that miracle is about feeding others. But what about this passage about loving our enemies? How does that instruct us to feed other people? So let's look at that a little bit together. Luke 6, 27 through 38, we talked about, or I read this a little bit ago. Jesus teaches the people, love your enemies, bless those who curse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other one as well. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. The golden rule, right? And then, he, and then he does this. He says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that? I mean, even sinners love those who love them. If you, if you, if you give to someone you know who's going to give you back, what, what's the point in that? What good is that? Love your enemies. Do good. And lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. So again, we're, we're talking about serving and loving here. We can see that, right? But why do we have to do that for our enemies? And, and why, when our enemies strike us, are, are we not to return that? Well, I think there are two reasons here, and he, and he gets at both those reasons a little bit. But the first of all, I mean, is... And we're not talking about peace here necessarily this morning, but if we want peace, we have to make peace, don't we? I mean, it's, there's, that's, that's something you have to work for. It's not easy. It's not just going to happen. And so Jesus is teaching us a little bit about that. But the other part of this is, if, if we expect something in return, then the act that we're doing just doesn't mean as much, does it? That's what he's teaching. If you do something good to be seen and given credit for it, 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 it doesn't matter as much. It doesn't mean as much. If you feed somebody because you know they're going to turn around and feed you, you know, I wash your back, you wash my back kind of thing, it, it's not what Christ is talking about. Jesus wants us to be ready to feed anybody and everybody, to serve and love, even expecting nothing in return. And when we feed our enemy, we certainly would expect nothing in return, right? If we give to or serve those whom we know are opposed to us, we're not expecting anything back. We're feeding them, we're loving them, we're serving them because that's what our God teaches us to do. And because we know that's how love grows, right? And it's interesting because there is a reward, <laughs> but it's not from the other person. There's a, war, a reward from God. And it's kind of nice. I mean, it sounds, sounds great, doesn't it? I don't know what form that reward is. We're not told. I remember when I was a child, um, and I don't remember all the circumstances, but I, but I remember this lesson in it. I did something. I, I must have been about five, okay? 
I was at that age where I was old enough to barter and kind of understand things a little bit. And I did something that I knew my family needed to be done. And my parents loved it, and they did something nice for me. Like, they, I don't know what it was. Like, they gave me a toy or ice cream or something, and I was excited. So I started looking for other things I could do, you know, because I want another toy. I want more ice cream. And I, did, and I did something else, and I said, hey, look what I did. You know, we're... Where's my toy? And, uh, I, and I don't remember the circumstances exactly, but, I, but this is the part I remember. My mother sat down with me and said, you know, if you do something nice for somebody else because you expect a reward, you might not get it. You might not get a reward. But if you do nice things because it's a good thing to do, because it's what God taught us to do, because it's expressing love, which we have for each other, then that's a good thing to do. And then maybe you will get a reward. But don't do it for the reward. That lesson stayed with me. So, um, so as we think about feeding others... There's a whole lot that goes into that, isn't there? When you think about serving, serving the church, serving the community, many of us serve through, through our, our vocation, the things that we do for a livelihood, right? But I want to challenge us all, and I have been challenging you the last several weeks to think about what you do here that feeds you. What's, what's a ministry you can be involved in, whether it's Sunday school or small group uh, or you know, singing in the choir or, 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 or whatever it might be, okay? The, the, like things like the retreat and other events like that, um, that feed you. That, that you can point to one thing here that's going on that you're plugged into and you know feeds your soul. We all need that, don't we? But we also need to be feeding and serving others. And, and what is that for you? Many of us have that. A great many of us are doing that. Is there, but is there something in the church you can point to? And again, we're talking about feeding literally or just metaphorically, serving others, maybe serving the church as, and your role on session or the deacons, or again, leading, a, leading or teaching a Sunday school class or a small group ministry, serving on a committee, um, singing in the choir, helping out with worship, um, Audio and visual, especially with all that they did today to keep us going. Hosting fellowship after worship, greeting and ushering. I mean, all the volunteers that it takes just to do worship every week. There's lots of ways to serve there. But then there's also ways to serve the church outside of the church, in the community and beyond, around the world. I asked for our mission committee this week um, to give us a, a, just a short list of things that, that they're involved in that you all might want to get involved in in some way. And the list I got back isn't short, but it's wonderful. It's a wonderful list. I'd like to share it with you. Okay, we, we have our benevolence ministries. Uh, we, we participate and, and help support Bethlehem House, blessing bags, Kapka Christmas food boxes, Christmas market, Christmas missions. A lot of you help out, uh, shop at the Christmas market or, or help sell goods there. We're involved in, with Vera Lloyd and some of the things that they do. Uh, with Coho, lots of the things that they do. Cradle Care, Daily Bread, Habitat for Humanity, uh, Hospitality for Those Seeking Asylum. It's a conversation that we're, that we're having, how to do that. Jail Ministry, Catali Seeds Ministry, uh, Mission Trips for Adults and Youth. Of course, we have a variety of offerings throughout the year, but we're not talking just about giving money here. We're talking about serving, feeding in your actions, okay? Not just giving resources. That's important to support it financially, but then what are we doing too, okay? Um, Soul Food Cafe, uh, the St. Peter's Thanksgiving Drive, uh, the Ministry Center, and I don't know what level of commitment you can make. Maybe, maybe, maybe you have the time and the means to say, okay, the next time Coopers go to Katali, I want to go too. Or the church sends a group to Katali. I want to go and I want to help the people there um, you know, learn how to, to use farming uh, tools that they're providing them. 
That's amazing stuff. But maybe you can't quite do all that. Maybe, maybe you want to help stock the little pantry on our grounds. That's feeding people too. Just as important. There are ways you can help out with our coho garden. Our youth are going to be there this afternoon. Getting it ready to go for a new season of, of, of wonderful food. Uh, coho Academy. Help, help kids do their homework after school. All of us could do that. Uh, tie purple ribbons around the community to rem- make people aware of the homeless in our community. That's something that uh, we could do through Coho and other activities like that. Visiting members, maybe this is inside the, you know, this is, this, this is, is more inside our church community, but visit members unable to, to leave their homes or provide rides for them. And there's, there's all kinds of ways to serve. And some of them might be one-time things. Some of them are throughout the year. I'm amazed at the things that our mission uh, efforts do, the ways that we're involved. And, and I've said that before, and, and it's true. But we can all get involved in one way or another. So listen, next week, um, next week there's going to be an insert in your bulletin. And this is um, an opportunity for us to write down and share um, one way that we are fed in this place and one way that we want to uh, feed others. It may be something we've been doing. It may be something that we want to try out. And this is not like a time and talent sheet. Nobody's going to look at these. We're just going to kind of recommit ourselves to feeding and being fed in this place. And, and bring them forward, and we'll pray over them together. And um, I know sometimes in the feeding others, we find we're fed too. But I'd like for you to focus on you know, one thing that's truly intentional place where you're fed, and another thing that's truly intentional where you're serving and feeding others. So be fed and feed. Feed others in abundance because there's an abundance we've been given with which to give. Feed even those who who can't or won't repay because that's the love that we've been given. Feed because God has fed us with abundant, abundant love. Amen, friends? Amen. Amen.